Susan in Worcester. Oh, hey, Susan, thanks for watching Free Speech TV. What's up? What's up? Hey, Tom. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm calling about um, the white privilege thing. Mm -hmm. I, I have two children, and my daughter has a son. He's blue-eyed, blonde-haired, and he's in his mid-20s. And he married a, a multiracial woman who is half white, one quarter black, and one quarter Native American. Mm -hmm. They have three daughters. The youngest one looks like my grandson. He's, she's got blue eyes and blonde hair. The middle one has brown hair, brown eyes, and looks white. The oldest daughter, however, has dark skin and um, African-American hair. Mm -hmm. And she is be absolutely beautiful. However, when I take the girls anywhere, it doesn't matter where, um, people make the nastiest comments really? about, yes, about why I have a little N-word N girl with me amongst themselves, you know. And when we go out to eat as a big family, um, the oldest daughter, uh, my, my oldest great-granddaughter is ignored, and everybody fawns over the two younger ones. Hmm. And, you know, I, it... <laughs> My county is Republican, almost all white, and um, the people, oh, most of the people in our county are Amish or Mennonite, and they don't vote. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm combining two things here, two ideas, but um, the far, for instance, we have letters to the editor constantly about um, how we're a Christian nation and how black people came from Cain. And, you know, really? it's amazing to me. Oh, yeah. It's amazing to me how redneck or, how, well, I shouldn't say that, but, you know, how... Well, racist would be a good word, Susan. How, how race, uh, right, yeah, how racist these people are. And, you know, then, then, then white, white people wonder why... These black children grow up with such a problem, uh, you know, in their heads because of uh, because of all the baloney that they've been through as youngsters. It makes me want to cry. It makes me sick. I get from it, and you can't. It's out there. It's just there. And I mean, I can't even take her to Walmart for that. Well, that's probably not a good example either. Or anywhere. Uh, you know, in this area without having uh, some kind of bigotry occur. Mm. And, you know, she gets it in school. Mm. She gets it in school. Um, she's, you know, her teachers, you know, they act like she's not bright. And I know this because my grandson, you know, teacher meetings, mm -hmm. parent-teacher conferences, etc. And the thing of it is, is that she's an A student. You know, and she reads. She reads while she's eight. And, you know, she's an awesome, awesome child. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder to myself, how is she going to grow up? You know, no wonder. It's no wonder that black children grow up with such uh, problems and run from the police and, you know, do those things because they're afraid. Yeah, I would say you they know, grow up they, with so many wounds. Yeah, Wounded. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when she was really little, we could protect her from that. But now she's getting to the point where she's going to be out there in the real world. And it just breaks my heart, yeah. really. And, you know, what can we do about it? Nothing. I mean, all I can do is just keep telling her how beautiful she is, you know. But... <sighs> And she's an awesome sister. And the two little girls, they don't, you know, they don't think anything of the fact that they're all different. You know, they're all different, every one of them, you know. Yeah. And we go from blonde hair and blue eyes to dark. Yeah. And, and from the same family, you know. And it, it's just, you know, it's just pathetic. There was it's an pathetic. interesting piece on Alternet uh, a while back. I had it in my stack. In fact, I'm going through papers right now as we talk, looking for it. 
and uh, that I've I've been meaning to bring up all week and and get into a conversation about, but I I just haven't had the the moment hasn't occurred, and maybe this is the moment. Oh, here it is. Um, it actually it was on TPM, and uh, although it might be an AP article, it was from TPM Cafe opinion piece and uh, by Chuck Burton. And the headline was, until we tackle segregation, white cops will keep shooting black people. And his argument was that, you know, going back, to starting with slave patrols, and then black codes, and then lynching, and then convict leasing, and, you know, on and on and on. We have this long history, and, and it's, it's continuing as a, a large part as a consequence of segregation. And we are in the process now, and have been for the better part of 20 years, of resegregating as a nation, voluntarily resegregating as a nation. And uh, Karen Hunter and I were talking about this on her radio show on Sirius the other day. Um, I don't know what to do about this. And and cuz I really believe that you know, living side by side, getting to know each other, having 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 our kids in the same schools, all that kind of thing. Um, is probably a really good thing and probably part of the solution to all this. On the other hand, you know, there is some reality to the idea that when, when the dominant, male-dominated, patriarchal white culture, of the uh, white Christian culture that controls this country, reaches out to minority groups, whether they be African American or Native American or immigrants or, or frankly, you know, in some of our efforts in other countries, when we reach out to them and say, yeah, you know, you can become like us, that that's really the velvet glove over the iron fist of cultural tyranny. Because what we're saying is, you will become like us. You know, we are, we are not taking your culture seriously. And there's a long history in the United States of black culture, as, you know, that, 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 is, that is, you know, in some very relatively clear ways, um, somewhat different from mainstream white culture in the United States. And so, you know, how do, we, how do we do that? Are we looking, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have any answer for it. Do you, do you Susan? I I think it's my opinion that well when when this relationship started um, our family lost friends our family lost between family between members. your between your white son and his and his multiracial wife right yeah yes you lost yes. friends because and family over know, this. Well, my oh, yeah, my son and my son-in-law, who would be the girl's grandfather, right. um, his family is. Um, they've stopped inviting uh, my my daughter and son-in-law to family gatherings yeah. because they might bring the little black girl. And um, now it, you're not it, talking about twenty years ago. You're talking about now. No, no, oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah my great granddaughter's only eight, and the other two are wow. three and five. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So we're talking. We're talking now. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what part of Ohio? No Worcester, longer. Ohio, is uh, northwestern Ohio, isn't it? Or northeastern? Um, I mean, it's northeast. It's um, we're about sixty miles. South of Cleveland and sixty miles north of Columbus. Right, and and maybe a hundred miles west of West Virginia, if I'm remembering my geography right. 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 Yeah. Yep. So but, so. But, I mean, that's yeah. that's kind but of our, a there's a there's a swatch of of kind of coal country white redneck, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that goes through that area. That's amazing. Well, Susan, thank you for. sharing. Uh, with me, I appreciate it, but I, I, I'm guessing a lot of our viewers got even more out of it. Uh, it's thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thank you for watching Free Speech TV on Dish Network.